Like, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys take care of your siblings. You tutor them, maybe. You're running a full-on daycare. So, write that down. Oh, we knew life would be alright. But who could have known it'd be this good? Oh, Hello. When I'm away from you, I'm happier than ever. Mic test, mic test. I don't think people talk about how easy it is to do a whole bunch of nothing. Like, you're doing so many things, you're waking up, you're going to school, you're doing all this stuff, but what are you really doing though? What are you really doing? And that is why I think that getting help on the activity section of the college application process is very, very important. So today in this video, I'm just going to show you guys some tips and tricks on how to get a good activity section and how to, you know, hype yourself up and make your activity section look polished. Yeah, Lego. Okay. Put ER after everything that you already do or already like to do. And I'm gonna explain this. Now this is like before you're even thinking about college really, maybe like your freshman or sophomore or junior year or senior year, we're all here. We all need help, it's okay. But basically just like starting, when you're starting to think about, okay, what extra, what extra, <laughs> what extracurriculars do I want to do? Start by thinking about the stuff you already do. Start by thinking about the stuff you already do. For example, let's say you like to sing and you sing all the time. Saying you like to sing isn't technically an extracurricular, but being a singer is. So start thinking about like, okay, what is the difference between someone who sings and between someone who is a singer? So let's think about it. Someone who likes to sing, maybe they're just singing in the shower, they play music all the time and they sing along, you know, but someone who is a singer, maybe they're writing songs, maybe they're recording, you know, and it doesn't have to be good. I think that's not something, I think that's something people like stress out about too much. It doesn't have to be good. It just has to be something, right? So, you know, try to write songs maybe try to record you know garage band is free um headphones are free oh no they're not but i mean like you know the phone the microphone on your phone is free just throw something together you know like it doesn't have to be good it just has to show that you're doing something and so when you start thinking like this then all of a sudden you have all these things that you can now do that show the college who you are what do you like to do the way you spend your time shows what you like to do, which is why the activity section is so important because if you're spending your time singing and making songs, it shows your passion for music instead of just saying, hey, I like to sing. And they're like, well, how do I know? And you're just like, oh, I listen to music. And they're like, so does everyone else. You know what I mean? That's kind of how I understood it when I was trying to fill out the activity section too. And that really helped me to think of that way. But also do not think that all of your extracurriculars have to be some type of, oh, I made an album that sold out stadiums and stuff like that. It doesn't have to be like that. I literally wrote down on my activities list that I sang at church, that I was like a part of the choir or like the lead youth choir at my church because it's something that's a big part of my life. And if they were to spend their time reading that, they would get to know a little bit more about me. So as long as it's something that is represents a little bit about who you are, then you should write it down or you should take your time to like write about it. Another example is let's say you like to crochet. I don't know where I got that, but let's say you like to crochet, right? You could start finishing a couple pieces, selling them here and there. All of a sudden, guess what you are? You're a businesswoman or man. Because as long as, even if you made only $15 from selling crochet, you still made money. You still, that's a business, you know? 
and we're not trying to get delusional we're not trying to be delusional here but it is a business you know so if you're someone who likes to do something like crochet all you have to do is finish a couple pieces big cartel is free that is a um <coughs> that is a platform where you can sell things online for free um make a big cartel account sell a couple pieces all of a sudden what do you have a crochet business what are you a ceo of what a crocheting business and that is a fire extracurricular so that is kind of how i would think about the situation instead of just saying i like to sing be a singer instead of saying i like to dance be a dancer and think about what that means for you and try to make it happen you know it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to show that you're trying so on to the next. Number two is find what activities you already do and just talk about them better. Or as I'd like to say, hype them up. It's not that hard to be great, especially when you probably already are great. You just don't know it yet. So for example, DoorDash, right? You, not only are you just a DoorDasher, but you provide services how do I put this? Instead of DoorDasher, you are a food transporter. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Now, that might not sound like a big difference, but that is an example of how you're actually doing more than you think you are doing. So don't sell yourself short. And this is actually something that you're going to probably have to do for the rest of your life, like making resumes and all that stuff. It's just annoying. But just like on a resume, you wouldn't write, I worked for Google. You would write, I programmed the psychological effects of AI. You know what I mean? Like just hype yourself up a little bit. And I'll go back to the example that I used of me singing at church. I didn't just write... I sang with my church choir. I wrote down that I led praise and worship and I forgot what I wrote, but I wrote something about like I led praise and worship and I managed certain different genres of praise, you know, because we did different songs, different genres, and I was in charge of sometimes teaching it, sometimes leading it. So that's cool. Like, and even if you don't think it's cool, it's cooler than I saying at church. Just don't sell yourself short. Let's say you designed something at school and the school ended up using it as like a logo or maybe a club ended up using it and put it on a t-shirt. You're a graphic designer. You are an artist, okay? So write that down. And I want you to think like this because you don't want to tell the college that you're doing nothing when you're actually doing so many things like i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys take care of your siblings you teach you tutor them maybe and you make sure they eat you make sure they go to sleep on time that's something you're running a full-on daycare now maybe don't write that down but there's a way to say i provided um, parental assistance to my siblings and that took me five hours a week that's very valid and it's something you should write down so basically my second tip is just to make sure you're not selling yourself short on the stuff you're already doing before even thinking about adding stuff focus on the stuff you're already doing make sure you're talking about them with respect like don't just push them to the side and be like oh whatever i just tutor my brother every day no you're a tutor you don't just tutor your brother, you're a tutor. Because if he improves in his grades, that means you're doing something right and that means you're a tutor. So don't be delusional though, don't be delusional. But just don't sell yourself short and talk about the things you already do better. Yeah. Number three, number three. This is one of my favorite ones and this helped me a lot is ask clubs if they need help in something you're good at. So for example, I'm very good at graphic design-ish stuff, like designing stuff. So I asked one of the clubs that I was in 
I wasn't the president. I wasn't the vice president. I wasn't any secretary, treasurer, treasurer or anything. But I asked, hey, could I design the t-shirt this year? And usually it was just like some random person doing it. Um, but I said, hey, I have like extra time on my hands. I didn't. <laughs> but I was like, hey, I need I need extracurriculars. That's why I asked could I be in charge of designing the t-shirt and like um, some of the social media stuff? And they were like, cool, yeah, well, like why not? So all of a sudden I was a graphic designer, oh, merchandise designer and the social media marketer for so-and-so club. That is valid and it's something you can write down and it's something that helped me and it showed them what I could do because the t-shirt was cute the social media was cute so and that was all me so it's just a way for you to shine in your niche it's a way for you to shine in something that only you can be good at so that's why it's really important to do this and that's why that these type of things work because it still shows whoever is watching your work and mind you all of the stuff i'm saying you can use not just for college but for work jobs internships programs it goes on your resume, babe, forever. <laughs> I feel like my voice is, ugh. but yeah, it goes on your resume forever. It's helpful forever. It just shows them what you can do. Remember in one of the clubs I was in, we, it was a dance club and obviously we danced to music and there was someone who was mashing up the music. If you can do that, if you're good at that, you're an audio engineer, babe. Okay. You're an audio engineer because not everyone could do that so i was just thinking about it i was like yeah whoever mashed this up that year it was a really good mashup and i was like whoever mashed this up eight they could literally write that down and be like i audio engineered or can sound was the sound manager for this club you were who's gonna tell you you weren't who but yeah number four um is something I recommend. I recommend doing internships instead of job. And I will preface this by saying, I know some people need like steady income. They do need to work a job. They do need to know that they're gonna make this much amount, this much amount of money um, by this week and the paycheck's gonna come on time. So, so I know that for a lot of people, working jobs is really important for them. And it's something that they literally need to support their family or maybe support themselves. But if you're interested in kind of building up your extracurriculars, internships, short-term internships are way better than jobs because you get all this experience, all this, honestly, money because a lot of internships, because they're so short, the stipends or the money that you get are sometimes more than what you would get if you were just working by the hour. So you get all this experience, all this money, not all this money, but you get money um connections you get connections in such a small period of time that it boosts your resume it boosts your extracurriculars your activities it boosts your brain it boosts everything that's going on with your, your career right so that's why i don't recommend working taking a job where you work by the hour because you need to make sure that you're spending it doing something that's really going to help you and that's at least going to at least you'll have something to show for it right you want to make sure that you're doing something that you'll have something to show for in addition to working internships instead of jobs internships are way more niche so i recommend working niche internships like for a job if you work at walmart you're just like doing a bunch of things right it's not niche but if you do an internship, usually those internships are niche. They're like a business internship or a music producing internship, something like that. So really try to take your time and find the internships that match what you want to do. Your whole college application should kind of follow a certain thing. They should be able to read your application and be like, hey, this shorty, she likes to sing and she likes to dance. Or this other shorty, he likes to play video games and he's really good at it and maybe he wants to make a video game one day they should it's they shouldn't really be seeing on your application that this person wants to party do video games 
sing, dance, crochet, like all these different things, it kind of makes it hard to know who you are, right? So when you're looking for internships, try to look for, oh my gosh, I have like five minutes left. Try to look for internships that follow your niche, maybe a crocheting internship. It doesn't have to matter to anybody else but you, okay? So maybe um, hair braiding internship. I think that's pretty cool. Instead of working a full on job, you can do these internships that last maybe two to three months at a time. But when you leave those internships, you have a list of people, connections, and people that also like the same thing as you. So you have a list of people um, that you can connect with. You have a resume, you have something to add to your resume and you can also keep living your life because jobs take away a lot of your time. But if you need a job, no one else can tell you not to work it. So. Do keep that in mind. Okay, and the last thing, fifth thing that I would say um, will really help your activity section on your application is to look for virtual opportunities slash jobs instead of in-person ones. We live in a world where they expect so much from us, so much from teenagers. You know, technology makes things easy, but it also raises the expectations. So one way to really kind of help balance all this stuff is if you have virtual work because the time you spent getting ready for a job getting to the job and then forget about the time you spent at the job but then leaving the job and then un getting ready for the job is actually a lot of time but if you have a virtual job all you have to do is turn on the camera focus in lock in and then turn off the camera and you can get back to work so this is just something that helps will help you save a lot of time because when you have an in-person job it takes a lot of your time just like preparing for it so when you can i recommend looking for virtual jobs or maybe even at the job you are at right now ask them if they have virtual opportunities ask them if you could just be the social media manager and get paid for that ask them things like that because you'd be surprised they don't actually need you there as much as they think they do and working from home has so many benefits but you have to be disciplined you can't just you have to be on your zoom you have to be on your zoom like you cannot be slacking off or else you're gonna probably lose your job but yeah that's all that I have for today. I hope this was really helpful. Please, once again, always let me know in the comments if you guys have questions. I'll be typing away. Um, but I'm going to go back to being just a black girl. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. Be so for real, bro. You've got to be kidding me.